Today, we're going to be covering Star Wars Unlimited. Now, we talked about Star Wars Unlimited before on this channel, but today we're actually going to be going over some of the cards from the game and in preparation for when the set and the game actually releases in a couple of weeks. We're going to be going through each leader card that is in the set, and we're going to be talking about some of the cards that we think might actually work pretty well with them in the preparation for the set to release. We're going to do one leader card a day, hopefully, and so we're going to have multiple days worth of Star Wars Unlimited fun until the release of the very first set of the game. That being said, let's get right into it with our first leader card. Our first leader card is going to be Luke Skywalker. Now, Luke Skywalker is a starter deck leader card, so most of you have probably already seen this card before and even maybe used it in some playing around in the past. But we're just going to go over this character card and some of the things he can do with the actual cards from the booster set. Now, Luke Skywalker has the vigilance and heroism aspects. He's a force and rebel character. Obviously, he's a leader card. He has an action here. You can pay one resource and uh, exhaust him to give a shield to a heroism unit you played this phase. Also, that being said, you have, he has an epic action that if you control six or more resources, you can deploy this leader, flip him, ready him, and move him to the ground arena. And obviously, it shows there the stats he's going to have. When you decide to go ahead and do that, you then gain access to this version of Luke Skywalker. Now, this Luke Skywalker is going to be the unit version of the character. He's obviously going to say six costs there, but really they just mean that if you control six resources, you can deploy him. He's obviously still going to have the same aspects. He's going to have the same keywords. He's going to have four attack and seven defense, and he's going to have a new ability on attack. You can give another unit a shield token. So now looking at Luke Skywalker... Uh, faithful friend this version of the character is called you can see that he's all about giving your units shield tokens and shield tokens are this really nice token that soaks one piece of damage when you would take it otherwise so that being said let's look at some of the cards that works pretty well with this leader card Today's video let's take a look at what a shield a token actually is because a lot of the cards we're going to talk about is going to center around this shield token and what it could give them and what it can do for the game plan so it's a set zero cost because obviously you don't have to pay anything to attach it but it's going to be armor upgrade token and it's going to give plus zero to both attack and defense but it has an ability and if dam that if damage would be attached to this will be dealt to this attached unit i can prevent that damage and if i do you destroy or defeat the shield token so that's what it's going to do is basically going to say that every time somebody Every instance of damage about to be done to this unit, you remove it. You don't take that damage at all. And it can mean that your opponent can swing in really big with big attacks, but you can still somehow survive. Even smaller units can survive those big attacks. It doesn't just reduce damage by a certain amount. It just stops that instance of damage. So if it's one attack, then that entire bit of damage stops right there. So, obviously, in my personal opinion, the best base to play with, one of the best bases to play with Luke Skywalker is going to be a blue base, so you can get access to more blue cards with the double blue symbol. Obviously, I think I'm going to talk about later in this video, um, my personal favorite, other than blue, to play with Luke Skywalker. Um, not because I think that it's the greatest thing ever, it's just one of my personal favorites, one of the things I think is personally really cool to play with the character. Which brings me to a point to say that this video is not going to be looking at the how good this character is going to be meta-wise and competitively. Because the like cards haven't even come out yet. I haven't done extensive testing against other people. I don't know what's really going to be great for each and every leader. But I do know what cards seem cool with me and work really well, synerg synergize really well with the leader's abilities. And so if you do want to play double blue Luke, then I think it's actually a pretty good thing. You can play security complex as an epic action to give a shield token to a non-leader unit. So it only has 25 health, but obviously that's an option you have for yourself. And then also, if you don't want to go for the ability 25 health base version, you can do a 30 health um, uh, ability list base. Obviously, that's going to be usually going to be pretty fine. But if you want the extra ability to give more shields throughout the game, or rather that that one more that more shield then you can use that base as well. So that being said, let's take a look at some of the cards that could be work pretty well with him on blue. So uh, Vigilant Honor Guards is something that really comes to mind because of its abilities and its stats. It's a heroism card and it's a Vigilant card, which is going to be really important. What that's going to say is that Luke can give it a, a shield token with his ability, but also it has six health, which means it's pretty big. And as long as it's undamaged, it's going to gain Sentinel. And that means that if you put a shield token on it, and it's going to be undamaged when you first play it. So if you play it, use loot, put a shield token on it. Then it's going to have a shield token and sentinel. Which means your opponent's going to have to attack this thing. And when they try to attack it, it's going to just soak it up and stay um, 
undamaged for a bit um, longer. So it's going to be a pretty good defensive body. And as you can see, as I talk about a lot of these cards, I'm going to talk about them because of their defensive abilities, which is sort of why you want to play them with Luke. Though you can also play Luke aggressively, and I'm not going to say act like that's not a possibility that you may want to do. Another cool card, one of the bigger cards that you can play with Luke is obviously Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's a, he's a hero, heroism card, so you can definitely use that Luke ability with him. He has Sentinel always, same 6 and six and 4, 4 attack, 6 defense as an honor guard, but one more cost, and he's also unique. But well, when he's defeated, you can give two experience tokens to another friendly unit. And if there's a if, if it's a forced unit that you give the experience to, you get to draw a card. So obviously he's gonna make your opponent want to attack him. He's gonna be a big body on the field, and also he's going to actually give you benefits when they finally force to take him down. So um I think that's a pretty good thing. Obviously, Obi-Wan works well with Luke, wouldn't you know it? Another thing is that you can use some of these cheaper ground unit cards, such as Cloud City Wing Guard and the Wilderness Fighter. They have the same stat line, being a three-cost Vigilant um, card. They have two power and four defense, but their abilities are only slightly different, where the Cloud City Wing Guard has Sentinel and the Wilderness Fighter has Shielded. Shielded is when you play the unit, you can give it a shield token. Obviously, both of these work pretty well with Luke for the same kind of reasons. They're really good, cheap, defensive bodies that you can put on the field that your opponent's going to have to try to defeat. I personally prefer the Cloud City Wing Guard, not only because it has Sentinel, um, but because it uh, comes in the starter deck, I'm pretty sure. So you're going to have a couple copies of this card regardless. Moving on to some of the space um, the space um, units that you can play with Luke that I think work pretty well. The Distant Patroller is a pretty good space vigilant unit. When it's defeated, you can give a shield token to a vigilant unit, and it's pretty cheap. So you can play it down, use it, or have your opponent try to kill it, and then give a shield token to one of your vigilant units. And then you can also play... Um, you can play uh, the Redemption. It's going to be a unique spaceship, and it's going to be a whopping 8 cost, which means that you're going to not always be able to get there because you are going to um, die pretty quickly. Games go pretty quick in Star Wars Unlimited, so not every time you're going to get to 8 resources, but you are playing a more defensive deck. So if you are playing a more defensive deck, you can sort of stall the game out till 8. And if you, if you do, and when you do get there... It's going to be a 6 damage, 6 power, um, 8, um, 9 de defense uh, card, and it's going to have Sentinel right off the bat, so it's going to be a big body that your opponent's going to have to take care of. You can use it with Luke's ability to give it a shield token, and when it is played, you can also heal up to 8 total damage from any number of units or bases and deal that much damage to this unit. So if you really need to, you can heal up if your Luke character card, leader, or unit is still in the field, you can heal him up if he happens to be. And then you can also heal up your base if it needs a little extra health so you can survive that much longer if you're at death's door. And at 8, if you're also alive to 8, you're definitely going to be towards death's door. So you can heal up your base by sacrificing this unit. And so there's a lot of different ways you can use this unit as a big attacker to finish out a game, as a big body to protect yourself, or as a way to heal up your base. I think it's a pretty cool addition And when you're playing a blue Luke. So then you can also use the Moment of Peace event. We're talking about events here. It just gives a shield token to any unit. It's going to be a Vigilant um, event. And then you can use um, the, the Forces With Me uh, event. It is a Vigilant Heroism event, with, uh, which I'm going to cost four resources. And you can choose a friendly unit and give two experience tokens to it. And if you control a Force unit, also give a shield token to the chosen unit. And you may attack with the chosen unit. So it's going to be a very, very, very um, interesting card in Luke because obviously it's going to buff them up with experience tokens. It's going to, experience tokens, if you don't know, just give the character plus one, plus one, I believe. So then it's just going to give them a little extra stats, and then you can also give it a shield token, which is going to give it a little buff up its um, survivability. And then, of course, you can swing ahead, go ahead and swing with that unit. Obviously, it's a pretty good card to play with Luke. And then if you're talking about upgrades, you obviously have to have Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. It's going to only be, be able to be attached to a non-vehicle unit, but when you play it, and if it is attached to Luke Skywalker, you can handle all damage from him and give him a shield token, which is going to mean that if you have your unit, your leader, your leader unit, Luke Skywalker, on the field, or of course the unit unit, Luke Skywalker on the field, if you're not playing the Luke deck, but obviously we are. So you can have, if you have that Luke Skywalker on the field, you can attach this to him. It's going to give him plus three attack, make him a bigger swinger, and a plus one descent defense. And then, of course, it's going to only cost two resources, and it's going to allow you to heal him completely up and let him be ready for action in, for more turns in the future. Also, you can play Protector. This is one of the biggest reasons you might want to play Double Blue Luke. So you can use this Double um, Vigilance um, card. It only costs one unless, of course, you don't have Double Vigilance, which means the cost can go up pretty high if you don't. 
but then the attached unit is going to gain sentinel so if you have a big unit on the field that doesn't already have sentinel and you want to give it to sentinel you can attach this to it and it's also going to give it a nice plus one plus one and it's probably one of the biggest reasons why you should play double blue obviously also the vigilance event card itself so then let's talk about say you don't want to play uh luke on blue so we want to play him on a different uh, aspect my personal favorite for that is going to be green luke green luke can be played in my personal opinion i think he's best with echo base but obviously you can use command center because it's kind of the same thing uh as, it is the same thing as echo base unless except it's just less thematic and then um it uh, you can also play the energy conversion lab with only 25 health but it gives a nice epic action to play a unit that costs six or less from your hand and give it ambush this phase and as you're going to see as we talk about some of these green cards a lot of them are here because it's going to give you more units to play with throughout the game and it's going to allow you to keep put, applying that pressure as well as putting out more defensive bodies so a nice example of a units that allow you to get other units is a command unit which means that you can use it a heroism unit which means you can use it with luke's ability it's going to be really cheap at only one cost it's going to have one power and two defense and it's going to have a nice action where you can exhaust it or tap it and you can play a unit from your hand and it's only going to call it's going to cost one less this turn so you can allow you to pour out some more units onto the field in the future using this nice little unit here and then you could also have other options like mon mothma Moth, mothma sorry it's also a heroism unit so you can use it with luke's ability um a one three so when you have a win played ability you can search the top five cards of your deck for rebel card reveal it draw it obviously this is a really nice addition to your deck because it can give you more units to play with throughout the game which is kind of commands whole thing but i think it works pretty well with luke as well other ground units you can use is like the echo base defender which is going to allow you to have a sentinel unit that has heroism so you can use it with luke's ability it's going to be similar to the uh cloud city wing guard that we talked about earlier in the video um, and the similar um, uh, effect, you can actually play both in the same deck since Cloud City Wingard is only one Vigilance and Luke gives a Vigilance anyway. So if you're playing Vig Luke Vigilance Command, you can definitely play both these guys in the deck. And I think this guy's pretty cool because you can lose him with Luke's ability. And then you can also play the, um, this is a more thematic option in my opinion, the squad, the Rogue Squadron Skirmisher. It's a bigger cost unit. But um, it's a four-six ambush. So when you after you play this unit, you can ready and attack with the um, within it. You can ready and attack an enemy unit. And then also when you play him, you can return a unit that costs two or less from your discard pile to your hand, getting back one of your uh, cheaper units that is going to allow you to put some more smaller um, threats on the board. So then obviously for events, or for the space units, I mean, you're gonna have options like the Bright Hope. It's a big unit, obviously, with a big six defense. It's only four calls, so it's not that expensive to play as Sentinel. And it also has heroism, so you can use Luke's ability with it. And then when you play this card, you can return a friendly non-leader ground unit to its owner's hand. Um, if you do, you can draw a card. So you can pick up one of your probably damaged units, or say you can pick up your, um, your uh, honor guard. And so they're going to lose all those damage counters they had on them, and you can replay them down for more benefits for them to be um, completely healed up and have that sentinel ability once again so obviously this is gonna be a really big um body in space and then if you want to play another big space card again you're probably not gonna play this card and the other big space card because they're both cost eight and you're probably not gonna get a chance to play both of them but if you ever do want to play one or the other i think this is a pretty cool option home one it's going to be a vigilant uh command sorry and heroism unit so you can use luke's ability with it it's going to be a seven seven big body it's going to restore two which means when you attack with it you can heal two from your base and there's also going to have each other friendly unit gains restore one which means they have the same ability except you can hear one damage from your base when you attack with them and then of course when you play this unit you can play a heroism unit from your discard pile and it costs uh, i believe three less to play and so that's going to allow you to get more heroism units onto the field even though you just tapped out by playing this one ship absolutely amazing in my personal opinion um, for events, you can have the U-Wing Reinforcement. It's a 7 cost, so again, really expensive, but you get to search the top 10 cards of your deck for 3 units with a combined cost of 7 or less and play each of them for free. So essentially, you get to search your deck for um, up to a 7 cost unit if you really need to and play right onto the board. You can also search your deck um, for a um, two, uh, uh, one, three cost, and one four cost unit. You can search your deck for a two cost, a three cost, and another two cost. So really, this is gonna let, gonna allow you to put some bodies on the field that you may need, some sentinels maybe, some character you can um, shield up with Luke, or some other options of the like. And I really like this card um, for that reason. But of course, it's extremely expensive, so you have to watch out for that. You might not get a chance to play it. 
And then finally we have Recruit. It's a cheap a cheap card, but it search allows you to do a similar thing. You could search your deck for ten for five, search your deck, search the top five cards of your deck for a unit, and you get to put it into your hand. So then obviously you can if you you obviously don't get to play for free, but this is tons cheaper than the other option there, and it's gonna allow you to still find units to play onto the board to use with Luke's ability because it only works on your unit you played this turn, or you can find units just to just simply add more bodies to the field. Um. You Are My Only Hope is going to be a card here. It's going to be a three cost. It's just a heroism card. This is not exactly a command card, but it's going to be a nice card that you can use to look at the top card of your deck and play it, and it's going to cost five less, so it's obviously going to be a way to get some buys on the field or use more cards with Luke's ability. And then if you have a base that has five or less remaining HP, you can play the card for free instead. So obviously this card is going to be um, a big thing when you get down to it. Like I said, if you're trying to draw the game out to play at a big ship or something like of something of the sorts then obviously you're gonna need something that is going to help you out as the game thins down and this is gonna allow you to bolster up your roster as the game draws to an end and for the upgrade cards for command the biggest the best option in my personal opinion is going to be Academy training um obviously i don't really know it doesn't really work exactly too well with luke but it's one of the best command upgrades that you have playing as luke and so it's going to just give some more stats to any character you choose which could be the difference between winning or losing the game that being said that's just a quick overview and a quick look at luke skywalker the uh starter deck um Gummus character for heroism in the Star Wars Unlimited trading card game. Like I said, we have a couple of weeks until this game, Star Wars Unlimited, drops proper. And so when we do, we're going to keep talking about these leader cards until that happens. Tomorrow, the day after this, is hopefully going to be the Darth Vader video. We're going to talk about some cool cards that Darth Vader can be used with. And so hopefully you guys will stay, you guys will stay around and listen to that. That's going to be all for today's video. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace out, and keep loving Star Wars.